All right. Okay. Is this thing on? Hello, my name is Uma. I am a software engineer at Microsoft. In this video, I'll be sharing my journey on how I got into software engineering and how I ended up at Microsoft, highlighting my previous experiences and everything I've learned so far. Let's get into it. Like most people, my journey to becoming a software engineer began in college. I started off studying aerospace engineering. After two and a half years, I switched to software engineering for two main reasons. The first was job security. I was having a hard time getting internships as an aerospace engineering major, and I knew it wouldn't get easier when I started looking for full-time jobs. The second reason was that I wanted something more versatile, something that could be easily applied to various industries so I could easily pivot into working in a different sector if I got bored and needed a change. In March 2017, right in the middle of the spring semester around spring break, I switched my major to software engineering. I dropped all the aerospace classes I was taking. It was too late in the semester to pick up any computer science classes, so I started learning coding all by myself. My university email account came with a free subscription to lynda.com, now LinkedIn Learning. I used a free account and spent all of spring break learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Looking back, I can honestly say that was one of the best decisions I made because it set me up for so many things to come in the future. I started with simple projects like creating a web page, then moved on to styling and adding animations using CSS, and eventually worked my way to adding functionality using JavaScript. I remember building a simple web calculator as my first official project. I was so happy because I was doing it. I was writing code and seeing the code come to life. I continued taking courses on lynda.com for the rest of the semester. Towards the end of the semester, a friend of mine sent me a poster of a research group on campus looking for software development interns to work over the summer. I hadn't taken any college software classes and the only software experience I had was from courses I took on LinkedIn Learning but I applied anyways because I didn't have anything to lose. I sent the web calculator I made as my portfolio project. A few days later, I got an email asking for an interview and I did the interview and got the job. So here I was starting a paying job as a software development intern without taking one software level college class, using solely what I learned by myself a few weeks after switching majors. This was the point where my mindset changed to continuous learning and self-improvement. I realized that I was in control of my own destiny and if I put in the work, the results would show. The conscious decision to go on lynda.com and learn programming by myself set me up to get this job, which then set me up to get other jobs in the future. I invested in myself and I was now reaping the benefits. I worked with the research team that summer to build a web application in plain HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and got the opportunity to present the project at a conference. After that summer was over, I continued looking for jobs on campus during the fall semester to gain more valuable experience. I targeted jobs with high impact and high visibility, specifically roles that would show employers that I knew how to write code that applied to real-world scenarios. I ended up getting a job at the civil engineering department to redesign and rebuild their website. Again, this was plain HTML and CSS, but at a greater scale with even bigger impact. When I went to career fairs and employers would ask what I was working on, rather than explaining, I would pull out my phone and show them the website explaining the changes that I made and the reasoning behind making those changes. That was the most high impact employer relatable job that I could get at that level. The website was in production, public facing and used by hundreds of people every day. The research project I worked on was also live, so I would show them the web applications when they had questions. This was also when I started doing hackathons and working on mobile apps, genuinely falling in love with software development and loving what I did. I always carried an extra Android phone with me that had all the apps I built. I carried it during career fairs and job interviews to demo my work to employers. There was no doubt that I loved what I was doing. You could hear and see the passion in my voice when I spoke about software development. It helped me stand out from all other students because it showed that I had valuable experience. I knew what I was doing and I showed them that I knew what I was doing. There was never a question mark on my technical abilities. This was around when I started to gain attention from big tech companies. I applied online to internship programs but I never thought I would hear back because those companies get thousands of applications. I remember getting an email from a Google recruiter asking to interview me and I honestly thought it was a prank. I interviewed with them that time and several more times in the future but never received an offer because I didn't know how to study for technical interviews. I kept failing the interviews but that's a topic for a different video. The following summer in 2018, I got an internship working at Rockwell Automation, an industrial automation company. I developed setup wizards for industrial drives and built an application to help them keep track of the drives they had in the factory. I worked with Angular, MongoDB, Express, Node and some C Sharp. After that summer, I realized most of my professional experience were all web related, but there is so much more to software engineering than just web development. I started looking to diversify my experience to make myself more marketable and to explore other aspects of software development. During that school year, I worked with a professor writing C and C++ script, analyzing audio files. 
This introduced me to low level programming and gave me some experience coding in C and C++. At this point, I was actively interviewing at the fine companies, the Googles, the Apples, Facebook, and more. They had recruiters coming to campus to interview and would reach out or message me via LinkedIn. I interviewed with them several times, but never got selected. I interviewed with Google four times, with Facebook three times, Microsoft two times, and Apple once. I failed every single one of them. I knew I had something special because they wanted me and they kept coming back, but I couldn't figure out why they never selected me. Regardless, I kept going. The following summer in 2019, I got another internship working at SPS Commerce. They make software that connects retailers and suppliers. I worked on an application that connected Nordstrom to UPS. It was mainly Java and AWS. I worked with them over the summer and they liked me so much that they kept me and had me working for them remotely over the next year until I graduated. Before my final semester, I got an email from Microsoft and a few other companies saying they were coming to campus and they were interviewing for full-time roles. This time, I was determined to get an offer. I studied so much and used every single resource at my disposal, like Pramp for mock interviews, lead code for questions, and more. I did so many mock interviews that the platform ran out of questions for me. I got lead code premium and studied a lot of questions, understanding the techniques to solve the problem and finding the patterns. I watched multiple videos from Back to Back Sui and many other people. I got to the point where I knew the answer to almost every interview question that was asked because I had either seen the problem before or seen something very similar. The interviewers always had to find a new question or make up their own questions because I finished the interview early. I pretty much cracked the code to technical interviewing. I have a video about that whole process linked above and down in the description if you're interested. I got different offers from a few companies and chose Microsoft because their culture and values aligned the most with me. Here are the key lessons that I've learned so far. First, you'll notice I didn't talk a lot about schoolwork. Everything you learn in class is theory that might come in handy sometimes. It is important to keep your GPA up, but what sets you apart and what employers are looking for is experience. Most of the relevant skills that I needed to do my job came from working on projects and not classwork. I used my projects to get my first few positions, and once I had those experiences, no one ever asked about my GPA or college classes. They were more interested in the work that I had done and how it translates to what I can do for them. So focus more on practical projects and a little bit less on theory. Secondly, I know many people want to work for the top tech companies, but the reality is that it may or may not happen, and even if it does, your timing may be different. I would strongly suggest considering smaller companies. You can learn a lot and have very fulfilling careers from there. My experience working at SPS Commerce for a year taught me everything I know about AWS today. Because it was a smaller company, I had the opportunity to own a code base as an intern, which taught me a lot. Sometimes, interns in bigger companies will mostly work on little in-house projects that get shelved when they leave. This is less likely to happen as an intern at a smaller company. Your dream may be to work in some of the bigger companies out there, but start with the smaller companies that are willing to take a chance on you right now so you can learn and grow from them. Everyone's timing is different and you will eventually get to where you want to be. Spend time learning and investing in yourself so you'll be ready when your opportunity comes. That's it for this one. If you enjoyed or learned anything from the video, then consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and catch you on the next one. Peace.